Hello, this is the second lecture uh, in the series of fine arts lectures, uh, the music portion of the class. Uh, we're going to talk about art music. This is just a reminder before we get going that you should be writing all of this information down, not just the stuff that's written on there, uh, on the screen rather, uh, but also there's some things that I say to emphasize their importance um, that should also be written down that aren't necessarily written down. So make sure that you're listening as well as watching. Pause if you need to. And here we go. So today, on the agenda, uh, first we're going to start with talking about what art music is. Then we're going to talk about what uh, classical music is. It's a term that's tossed around quite a bit. Talk about what exactly that means, or in general, what that means. Um, and then we're going to talk about concert etiquette. So uh, especially in preparation for you going to your uh, classical music concert this quarter. And then we're going to talk about the four steps to becoming a good listener. So all kinds of important stuff here. So let's get started. Um, art music. So there are two big um, main ideas for what art music is. Uh, first of all, art music is music that is written down. Um, it's usually too complicated to be communicated just uh, by playing it by ear or just learning it in your memory. Um, it's very complicated stuff when we think of Art music, we think of lots of different instruments playing at the same time, or uh, different singers, different voices singing at the same time, that kind of thing. Um, so it's advanced um, and it's written down. The second uh, of the two distinguishing factors for art music is that it is usually used, not always, but usually used to express a uniquely musical idea. So that means it's not a vehicle to convey any other sort of idea, it's not just there to tell uh, the lyrics, uh, like tell a story, like with lyrics or something like that, although it could be, um, it's not necessarily just conveying another idea. It's music for the sake of music. It's just there to be beautiful, it's there for us to take it in, it's there to make you feel something uh, and sort of touch you in an artistic way, in much the same way that uh, visual art is sometimes much visual art. It's not meant to tell a story, it's just there to be gorgeous, meant to be appreciated. So. Why are we talking about art music? We're talking about art music because classical music, or what we call classical music, um, is art music. It has been written down um, and is often music for the sake of being music. It's not used for uh, necessarily for anything else. It's not just pop music or something. Um, so yeah, classical music, what we call it is Western art music, meaning uh, sort of European-based um, art music from the 9th century uh, to present day. I say 9th century because that's when uh, the music started to be written down. Before that it was all transmitted orally. So that's that. Classical music is art music. Okay, going on. So let's talk about concerts. Um, for this class you're going to have to, uh, as part of your grade, go to a classical music concert of some sort. Remember to see me or Miss Capito. Uh, to check and make sure whatever concert you want to see is going to be appropriate for class. Um, when you go to a classical music concert, it's different than going to a pop music concert. There's sort of different uh, traditions and sort of um, expectations for how people are supposed to uh, behave. Um, these aren't things that um, I'm personally uh, very happy with necessarily, or that anyone is. It's just the way that it is. That's the way there are certain ways people are expected to behave, so I just want to let you know what those are. So, um, the first thing you should know uh, is before you go to a classical music concert, uh, you're expected to be prepared. Um, that's, I guess, the same as most people um, when they go to a pop music concert, they probably listen to the tracks from whatever group they're seeing uh, beforehand. Similarly, if you're going to go to a concert, once you figure out what that is, make sure um, to do some homework beforehand, you know, figure it out, go uh, search online a little bit, find something about the history of the composer, the composition, is there anything unique uh, or special about the, com uh, the compositions that you're going to hear, uh, maybe the group that you're going to hear, anything like that. Um, if there's a conductor, remember the conductor is the person that stands in front uh, of a group, usually an orchestra, maybe a choir, something like that. So if there is a conductor, uh, his or her gestures um, indicate important musical events. We're going to talk about more the talk more about the conductor uh, later, but um, just watch that person if there is one um, to 
just sort of get an idea of what's going on. Um, also observe how the musicians communicate with each other, and I mean communication uh, in a non-verbal way, uh, the way that they use body language maybe, or um, uh, eye contact, or any of those kinds of things. There's a lot going on there uh, if you're paying attention, so I encourage you to do that. Um, listen for changes uh, in mood, texture, volume, or anything else. Uh, even if you're not uh, a seasoned classical music listener, um, just listen for changes. Listen for what is different. Okay? Uh, listen for what's the same and what's different as the piece moves on. So, okay. Um, so, there are lots of different types of settings over the years um, where classical, what we call classical music, um, has been heard uh, and enjoyed. Uh, it's heard in living rooms. It's heard in my living room sometimes and other friends' living rooms, churches, concert halls, classrooms, subway stations, street corners, parks, lots of other places. Um, I think it's important to know that it's not only performed in concert halls and it's not only performed by orchestras. Um, classical music is performed in many, many, many places, but um, the uh, place that you're most likely for this class, I'm guessing, to see a concert is going to be in a sort of more traditional um, concert hall setting. So, in the old days, um, a few centuries ago, as as uh, soon as the 1800s and earlier, um, people used to go to what are considered classical music concerts. They would yell, they would dance, they would boo, they even throw things. Uh, there are even some examples of riots that have broken out in the middle of uh, pieces, like Stravinsky's Rite of Spring was called the Riot of Spring. Um, because there was a riot that broke out in the uh, this premiere of this classical piece, which is also ballet. Crazy stuff. Used to get pretty nuts. Uh, but today, um, there are certain, for better or worse, expectations for how people are meant to behave. Um, so I want to share with you what some of those things are. So the sort of the behavioral expectations, the way that you're supposed to show um, your appreciation. So... Uh, so we're talking about concert etiquette now. Uh, first one is, um, unlike back in the old days, in the 1800s and before, um, you're expected to not talk um, or whisper during the performance at all. Um, that The idea behind that is that um, you're not distracting the other people around you from enjoying the music, and you're also not distracting the performers uh, from the music. Believe it or not, even if you're sitting very far away, uh, in a very quiet concert hall, if you're whispering or talking, it's noticeable to the people that are performing. So, um, applause is supposed to be at sort of certain uh, times. The first of that is when the conductor or the soloist or both walk onto the stage, um, and then at the an end of an entire composition. So that means you're not supposed to uh, applaud between what are called movements, and we'll talk about those more later. Um, hopefully before you go to your concert. Um, so the movements are little chunks of a big composition, um, but you're supposed to wait till the very end to applaud for the whole thing. Uh, if you're late, uh, depending on where you go to your concert, you probably won't be able to sit down until um, the uh, composition that is being played is finished. So that means sometimes if there's a long composition, something that's, let's say, 20 minutes, 40 minutes, if you show up late, um, you're going to have to wait a long time to sit down, so make sure that you come on time. That's uh, pretty important. So, uh, more about concert etiquette. Uh, electronic equipment. This is something, of course, that's only been an issue in the last few decades. Um, make sure to double check that your cell phone is off, and then triple check to make sure that your cell phone is off. Uh, it's very important. Uh, it's a, you know, a pretty embarrassing um, distraction if your cell phone is to go off in the middle of a uh, performance that would be a, a bad thing so make sure to um, triple quadruple quintuple check uh, don't check your email uh, don't play electronic games of any kind um, you know just don't be playing on your phone you're supposed to be focusing on the music so make sure when you're there uh, you're focused on the music not on anything else oh yeah and do not take pictures uh, that's commonly considered uh, taboo. You know, that's one of those other things we're not supposed to do, for better or worse. Okay, 
Um, so the four steps to becoming a good listener this is the last part of uh, the lecture for today. Um, and we're going to be practicing these in class and talking about them in class as well. Uh, the first one is learn how music works. So you're going to be learning how music works through these video lectures and, of course, in class as well. So that's good. You'll be learning more about how it works. Um, you're going to improve your musical memory. That means the more pieces that you listen to, that you have inside of your brain, um, the more you have to compare to other pieces. So that'll be good uh, as a basis of comparison. Um, number three is focus solely on the music. So focused listening. We are, I think, today, in today's day and age of cell phones and YouTube and Facebook and all that other kind of stuff, and we're used to such constant stimulus that um, this is kind of a hard one for a lot of people um, to sit down and just listen to music uh, without any other distractions. I know it's hard for me to do. Uh, it's a challenge, but it's something that I think that everybody should work on. Listening is an important skill. Uh, and then the last one of the four steps to becoming a good listener is practice listening, which we talked about in the last video as well. So that means practice that kind of focused music that we were talking about with number three. So that's that. Um, just to recap what we talked about today, uh, we talked about art music. Uh, we talked about what that is, uh, we talked about a little bit of the history of classical music um, and how people behave at concerts, how they used to behave, and how uh, everyone is sort of expected to behave in sort of concert hall settings like the Chicago Symphony Orchestra or something. And then we talked briefly about the four steps to becoming a good listener. So if you missed any of that stuff, make sure you rewind, get it all written down, uh, and that's that. Uh, now go practice listening to your favorite music. All right, I'll see you next time.